Welcome to today's COVID-19 update. We're speaking with the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Antony. Minister Antony, again, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me on this program. Uh, let's get straight into Bartica. The uh, active cases now stands at 80. What specifically is being done at the moment as we speak? Well, a couple of things. We have been monitoring the cases, and because we have been testing more in Bartica, that's one of the reasons why we're finding uh, additional cases. And as you know, one of the challenges that we have is that uh, Bartica is a community where people from other areas, especially mining areas, would be tran transiting through uh, Bartica. And therefore, we can expect if they're coming from areas probably that um, was suspected to have COVID, they can bring that into the community. So we are going to continue to do more testing. Um, the health team there has been working to ensure that they keep people safe. So far, most of the people that we have had from Bartica are really um, asymptomatic. Uh, we have a few that are symptomatic and we have very few uh, hospitalizations. So, uh, it seems, other than the numbers, when we test people, um, it seems that they have put adequate measures in place uh, to, to be able to detect and, of course, contact trace and monitor. Uh, outside of that, because we recognize um, a lot of people are traveling through Bartica, uh, the, by the end of the week, we'll be um, putting in some other measures uh, with Operation uh, Covey Curb, where we'll be uh, trying to make sure that persons coming into that area are, um, you know, are checked uh, so that we can reduce the incidence of uh, COVID-19 or persons with COVID-19 uh, entering Bartica. So these are measures that are are going to be instituted shortly and um, we are getting assistance from Operation uh, Covey Corp to do that. All right, so uh, not to diminish anything, but it's not a case of a whole doom and gloom that's happening in Bartica right now, as many would, would no, believe. I would say that the health personnel, the regional task force, they have been monitoring the situation, they know what to do. Uh, they have had high uh, cases, high uh, incidence of COVID-19 in, in the area, in different uh, areas of, um, of the region, and they have been able to successfully curtail it. Um, they have been working on this, and I'm sure once they continue to doing, uh, implementing the measures, that this too would come down. All right. Uh, two things. As a medical profession and as a senior member of the uh, COVID-19 task force, do you think that a lockdown is needed in that community? At this point, no. Um, we're going to continue to monitor. And if we believe that um, based on the epidemiological findings and so forth, if we believe that there is a necessity to do that, well, then we'll do that. But at this point, we don't believe that that's necessary. Okay. Uh, Minister, are we monitoring any other community right now? Uh, no. Well, we monitor all the, all the places <laughs> yes. where we have cases. Yes. Um, so we have been actively looking at uh, different areas. Uh, we, pay, we pay extra attention to communities where we are seeing higher numbers. Um, so our attention now is really a lot on Bartica but we monitor everywhere. And um, as I've said before, we have the regional health officers who meet every single day and they would review uh, the cases that they've had over the last 24 hours. So this is an ongoing effort. They are able to really um, keep their finger on the pulse uh, on what is happening with uh, persons getting infected, where they're getting infected, how much contact tracing has been done, how people have been quarantined or isolated, where are these people? So they, they you know, we're getting that type of information. All right.
mind. Uh, taking a, a brief look at the dashboard, we've noticed that the number of active cases have uh, is reducing, and that is something that we haven't spoken on in a little while. And I know you said with regards to Bartica, it's because more tests um, are being con conducted. So could you speak to that a little bit in terms of the reduction in the active cases? Well, uh, given how the, the dynamics of the disease, if, if we test someone and they're asymptomatic and we isolate them for 10 days, we then discharge them. So I'm happy that the overall trend is that we are having a slight decline. However, we can't be complacent uh, because we have had these declines before and then uh, we have seen things go up as well. Now, what we are seeing at the national level is not the same as in the different regions. So when we disaggregate by regions, the picture is a little bit different. So um, while we can be happy with the general national trend, uh, we are seeing a little bit of a different pattern in different regions. And therefore, the message here, the key message here is that people need to remain vigilant. We are entering a period when people tend to be more, um, uh, less stringent, so to speak, um, in terms of their social activity. They are going out more. They want to um, go, go to bars, although these things have been closed. Uh, my understanding is people are having more indoor, in, indoor parties and things like that. Now, you don't know who you're inviting into your home. You don't know whether they're um, COVID positive or not. And therefore, people ought to be very careful. And um, we want to continue to urge that because uh, we know what can happen when people gather. And when people don't use the various types of protection, you can have these types of challenges. So we really want to appeal to people that they have to take the preventative measures, which include the mask wearing and the social distancing, because as it is right now, we still don't have a single medicine that can solve all the problems of COVID, and we don't have a vaccine yet. Um, that's on the horizon, but we don't have a vaccine yet. Prime Minister, as we, uh, as you mentioned, vaccine, Starbrook News is asking uh, if we can, now that the anticipation is getting even greater for a vaccine, they just wanted a brief comment from you as to where we are in terms of, you know, getting a vaccine and so on. I know we've covered it before. Yes, yeah, so um, we continue to work with COVAX. Um, and COVAX is a global organization that is assisting countries to procure vaccines. Um, we are a subset of the COVAX arrangement because we are part of um, what is called the COVAX AMC. Uh, these are 92 countries that are going to get uh, free vaccines through this mechanism because the vaccines are going to be subsidized by Gavi. Um, for us to move ahead with that process, it requires that the, the, the government of Guyana enter agreements with COVAX. Um, they have given us a list of things that we have to go through. Uh, we have already signed letters of intent to be part of the facility. We had to sign um, a terms of, of agreement uh, to be part of the facility, and this goes across the the board for all countries who were involved in this process. So we had to complete that letter and sent it off yesterday, so that was done. Uh, we have another one that is coming up, uh, which would be for the 14th. And um, right now we are examining all the, the issues relating to that. That has to do with indemnification. So we are going to examine that and then on the 14th, once we don't have any uh, problems with it, we'll fill those forms in and send them up to COVAX. So basically, you're, you're entering a phase where a lot of these agreements have to be uh, sorted out country by country, and uh, you submit that to COVAX, and they would then start making uh, the necessary preparations. Apart from the 
contrary to COVAX arrangements, at the global level, COVAX itself um, is working out on governance uh, structures and so forth. They've had a meeting about a week ago where they were talking about how to manage the COVAX facility. So those countries who are paying for their vaccines uh, would have one management structure or governance structure. And those who are receiving their vaccines free would have another one. Uh, they were, for those who are receiving their vaccines free, there were three options that were put up. Uh, one is to have um, every country that is participating the, in the COVAX AMC to have a representative. The second was to have uh, 15 persons uh, or 15 countries um, being represented in a core group that, to make the decisions on behalf of the AMC countries. And then you had another model that talks about 20 countries. Now, these were discussed, debated. Um, from my understanding, where the meeting was leaning, a lot of people wanted to have um, every country represented. And um, we were asked to submit our uh, view on the matter, which we did. And um, we are waiting for some final outcome and decision making on that so that we can be very clear what this global AMC structure, governance structure would look like. So we have participated in those meetings. We have been able to give our opinions on these matters and so forth. And now that those things are being considered. So um, one way or another, we, we are um, constantly being invited to attend meetings of these bodies and to air our views, and we have been able to do so um, quite aptly. Um, in addition to governance and so forth, COVAX has been working with um, the manufacturers uh, to be able to expand their portfolio of vaccines. And I know they've also been in negotiations with Moderna to see whether or not they'll have the possibility of uh, including the Moderna vaccine um, and be able to access it earlier. So these are things that are ongoing, uh, the dynamics of which changes every day. And um, we just have to keep working at this because things relating to COVID, whether it's vaccines or other aspects of COVID, uh, it changes daily. And therefore, our source of accessing vaccines so far has been uh, the true COVAX, and we've been working very closely with them. All right, just one thing for clarity, which one of the governance structure do we fall under? We are part of the COVAX AMC, um, which meaning that the countries will be receiving free vaccines. Thank you. Uh, just one last question before we wrap up. Could we get a brief update on the Lillian Dahl Hospital? We know they're in operation. Just uh, what is happening right now? Well, more or less, uh, there's still some works to be done. And uh, these things are ongoing because, as you would imagine, we start operating the place with the understanding that we'll continuously be fixing things and and making it uh, fully operational. We're still not there yet, but a large part of the hospital is operational. Uh, we do have a spectrum of patients from mild to the most severely ill, and we do have the equipment and everything there to be able to uh, cater for the range of patients that we have. There are some additional things that we're working on to, to put in place, which includes um, installing a digital X-ray, um, we have to work on the theater. We have to do some work on, the, on a section to house maternity patients and so forth. So those works would be ongoing. And the way that we have separated patients, uh, they have very little contact uh, with each other. So chances of, of, of transmitting within the, the hospital is very slim. So we have been working and we'll continue to work to get more things up and running at Ocean View. Um, so it's a, really a work in progress. And the team there has been working very hard. Uh, we have more doctors and nurses, uh, pharmacists. Uh, we're gonna put some laboratory uh, people there as well. Uh, we wanna 
uh, very shortly open up the triage area um, because that has not been completed as yet, but they're triaged and then brought in uh, to the hospital. So there's still um, some more work to be done, but that's not affecting the care of the patients that we have there, which is the most important thing. Okay, Minister Anthony, again, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. All right, well, that's it for today's COVID-19 update. We, of course, spoke with the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony. Remember, for more information, you can log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and the Ministry of Health's website as well, health.gov.gy, and, of course, our social media platforms.